We're gonna set up an arena so that we can fight Astrum Aris, I believe. But we did just trigger the uh, the Martian Madness event, which is gonna happen in like a minute or two. So there's that. <laughs> but I did want to start making this arena. I'm probably gonna make it like right here, just start building over, and uh, and just have it here. And hopefully this episode we can fight him a few times. I did go into a new world, well not new world, but the old new world that I had made, and I, I I have done some things like, you know, crafting up some stuff, getting some materials and such, just so that things are easier, um, and I have the materials to make, you know, some more stuff, which I can show you, but they're all garbage weapons, so I'm not going to use any of them, but I can show you, um, and I was able to pick up the astral beacon. Uh, from the other world because the the Pixaw is apparently capable of doing that so I don't have to fight any of the new bosses or any of the astral uh, astral bosses in the uh, in a different world I can fight them all in this world which is very nice honestly very convenient so I'm just gonna finish up the arena a little bit because this guy has some annoying arena requirements like not really requirements but he's kind of annoying to fight and i'd like to have a good arena um especially one where i'm not accidentally killing the cultists over and over again because <laughs> i'd like to not spawn him until after i've fought duke fishron who i'm definitely going to be fighting i don't normally fight duke fishron honestly definitely not until after uh moon lord because i hate <laughs> i hate duke fishron He's annoying, but I can definitely defeat him because, I don't know, I'm just doing really well. Even with bosses that I don't normally like fighting, I'm doing a really good job this playthrough of being able to fight them. So I don't really feel like I'm incapable of fighting Duke Fishron. So I am going to fight Duke Fishron. That's pretty much my entire reasoning for being able to fight him, or thinking I'm able to fight him. So, because I think I can, I will. Uh, it's weird that there's those floating bits. But yeah, I'm just gonna make up an arena. I'm basically gonna place this platform here, and then I'm gonna place a platform uh, maybe this far up, just so that we have a few options in fighting him, because he is a big boy and he does like to jump around a bunch. So it's good to have some good arena choice uh, when fighting an enemy like that. But hopefully he doesn't get enraged when he leaves the area, because this guy... <laughs> This guy jumps so high and he goes all over the place that it's like, how do you keep him inside the arena? Or how do you keep him inside the biome, specifically? Um, we're probably going to make it a bit higher than that. Maybe, like, there. Because this guy does jump, like, massively high. And I don't want to deal with him. He's like double golem. Double golem height, but without the arms. And super annoying projectiles. So... I guess that that's normal golem to have super annoying projectiles, but his projectiles are kind of like the only thing he goes for, so. I will have to make some walls or something, because he has, you'll see, but he has some projectiles that are annoying that need to be launched into walls, but yeah. When night happens, actually, we'll do it now, just before... Although, I don't know when the Martians are actually going to invade. I'll wait for them, I'll fight them, and then then we'll get into it. Alright, so the, one of the things that we wanted to fight the Martian invasion for was one of the weapons needs uh, a sword from the saucer. So, we're going to have to be fighting the Martian invasions until the saucer shows up. And then hopefully we can defeat the saucer and get <laughs> get the thing we're wanting right away, because that would be nice. Uh, and mostly because I hate, like, dude, the saucer is, it's kind of cancer to fight, like, not even gonna lie, not even slightly, this thing is terrible to fight. It's probably, like, the worst mini-boss <laughs> that I could think of, because he's, it's just, it's so deadly, honestly. And you have to fight all these other enemies at the same time as well, like, it's just a real big hassle. And of course, you've got to deal with the fact that he likes... Oh my goodness. 
Like, what is this? I just get destroyed by some complete other enemy. <laughs> it's so dumb. And now I'm gonna die to it? Very nice. Please die. Thank you. And it didn't give me the right weapon, so we gotta keep trying. Ooh, another weapon that I got. Now this technically is a mage weapon, but I think it's so cool. It gives you the the 1.4 mount for a second or for six seconds. And I think it's so cool that I want it, so I'm keeping it. Because it's cool. And it lasts just long enough that you get the shield so you don't take damage from it, but does 100 damage to you when you use it. So it's definitely not like a real weapon. It's a super joke weapon. Um, but I think it's great, so I'm going to use it. Because it's great for mobility. And like, oh, my wingspan's out. Let me just use that. And dude, that this event is insane. Probably the most absurd event to ever exist because these guys are just demons they do so much damage they care zero amounts for like balance and fairness oh it would also help if i had these on i did also switch because i went to the abyss i forgot um i did switch out two of my accessories one of which was because i was fighting bosses over and over again um, I made the Celestial Shell because with it having menacing, it actually does more than 10% gains during the daytime, which is kind of insane to think about. Like, daytime power boost is better than just a 10% power boost with menacing. So, yeah, uh, I'll accept that. And then I did get the community, which drops from Leviathan, and it basically means every time you kill a boss, basically a, a normal vanilla boss in progression, you get more powerful stat bonuses from it. So because the only things that we haven't killed are Lunatic Cultist and um, Lunatic Cultist, Moon Lord, and the, the guy, the Duke himself, uh, we, we have like most of the way to the max upgrades. So there's not really that much left in the we need to do this range, which is nice. And that means that we have like pretty decent stats on it right now. So it's good enough. Uh, it's not quite as good, but it gives us defense stats as well as offense stats. So it's better than having a like just defense or just offense weapon or uh, accessory. Okay, that blade is definitely better <laughs> for killing him. Um, oh, we got the key, which is great if we wanted it, but I mean, we just got this cool mount that's not even a mount, so, eh. Um, I guess we'll just skip and hope that I get the, hope that I get what I'm looking for. I can go to the guy and just summon a whole bunch of these guys, which I'm probably going to do now, just so that I can hopefully get what I'm wanting. Um which is, I can't, okay. Oh, let me get some paladin summons though. Well, hopefully I get what I want, so. Guess we gotta wait and see. And there we go, we got the influx waiver, which is the thing that we wanted. And with that, well, I might just cancel the event because this is way too much. I'm still in the first event, and I've gotten like every possible drop, so that's a bit annoying. Oh, we can still fight this one. Nice. I guess we will. <laughs> See if there's a, a, a fifth drop. Alright, so what this gives us is the ability to make the Tenebris. Uh, I guess not. <laughs> it gives us the ability to make the Tenebris Tides which is 156, so it's not that amazing. And obviously it's before we fight our boy because we can still get Tenebris before then. Uh, but it just shoots a water spear that pierces enemies and terrain, which is nice. Uh, striking enemies splurge in liquid. Sum striking enemies summon liquid blades and spears to a salty struck foe. Um, and I guess... We need, we need a lot of Luminal, which we can get from Idolists, 
but yeah, so <laughs> probably not going to be getting too much Lumino <laughs> for now, which I guess a uh, bit of an oversight, but yeah, we can make that one whenever we want. Uh, different things that I've made uh, that are actually recommended for fighting the Lunar Cultist are... Uh, Legendary Omni Blade, which I thought would be cooler. I'm just holding. Um, you can kind of like cancel it and only hit the first few frames, which is kind of sad. But you can't direction it, only left and right. Uh, and yes, the swing is where it hits, so it's pretty accurate. Um, we got Blade of Enmity, which doesn't have any specific things happening to it. It's just a true melee. Uh, but we can upgrade it into the Animus eventually like way later um which i think is weird that it randomizes damage on hits but i mean gotta have interesting weapons i guess uh and then we also have the lucretia the lucretia lucretia uh this thing shoots out these beams uh depending on which way your cursor is facing and <laughs> i guess i i i don't know bad weapons <laughs> really bad weapon design like if it could shoot in any direction it would be pretty good but they're all pretty bad so we're not using them uh and that just means that we have to go and fight our boy the uh the astrum deus which i put away the the heart I need. I need a Titan Heart for that. And hopefully first fight will be good. Um, because then we'll be able to go straight into the next the next phase of of the fights. And hopefully we could fight Duke Ron. Duke Ron? Mm -hmm. Duke Fish Ron. Even though I think he's kind of difficult to fight, we should probably fight him. Would probably be a good idea. Um he will give us some decent stuff, as well as a stat upgrade from the community, which is a good idea. Um, so we are going to be fighting him, it's just whether or not I'll be able to actually defeat him. Um, I've been saying that a lot, and apparently I'm just really powerful, so... And also capable of just really long sustained fights currently, so thank, thank goodness for that, but hopefully this is no exception. This fight does require us to fight him at night, so we only have the 10 minutes to fight him, but it'll be totally fine. He's a piece of cake. He's so easy. Uh, let's die to him. Alright. Nice little summon animation here. And here he comes. Oh, it's the worm. Oh no. <laughs> I thought it was Astrobarus, not Astrobdeus. Um... I'm fairly certain we'll die because Astrum Deus is OP. And this is supposed to be Astrum Aris, is it not? Is it not supposed to be Astrum Aris? That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this. Uh, we're supposed to be fighting Astrum Aris, not Astrum Deus. Astrum Deus is after Moonlord? Before Moonlord. Alright, so it's not too late. Like, we're not too early on this, but we're kind of too early on this. Like, let's be real. Uh, if we die to this guy, we're we're supposed to be dying to this guy because he's overpowered, um, and he's he's a he's a worm. He's a a modern worm, um, and all the modded worms have the ability to make it so that if you have a weapon that hits multiple times, that uh, the weapon sucks, which I think. Is and he keeps hitting me with the reversal attacks. And the reversal attacks, he does those quite often. So I need to stop sucking and get good. And hopefully then I won't uh, get wrecked. But it is nice having the celestial, uh, the power of the celestial stuff, because it kind of just, you know, every time you're fighting something at night, which is every time you're fighting something, unless you're fighting Providence, who's just OP, uh, then you're going to be fighting stuff at night and you're gonna get that buff which is nice this guy just he won't stop yeah i should have made a third set of platforms because he does really like to do exactly what he's been doing which is annoying because ow yeah 
you're just gonna get to the point in which you just start taking way too much damage. He's jumping on you and he's shooting projectiles that you need to be far away from him to be able to dodge. We're gonna die. Woo. Having that healing over time is nice too because all the damage over time effects are very annoying. And in my opinion, it is just nice having a little bit of healing. Maybe not the level of healing that I was getting just because 8 HP every time I hit something. Uh, and then all of these other attacks here are also homing in on me, which is annoying. But that's totally fine. It's not as bad as the planets. <laughs> Hopefully, with a little bit of luck, we cannot die to Astromars. And we can kill him. Uh, we have 15 seconds left on Potion, which is not bad at all when you think about the fact that we just have to dodge a little bit, and we dodged enough that we didn't get uh, destroyed, so we're good. We won. Honestly, as soon as you get that, you know you won, in my opinion. If you get that late in the fight, like, you're just, you won. Ooh, we got a hallowed key. Very nice. I don't know if that's guaranteed, but that's probably guaranteed because, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. because... Uh, we weren't in the hallowed biome when we killed him. So things that he could have dropped, uh, can, can drop. We should, uh, open the bag and see. He didn't drop our weapon, which sucks. Uh, what he could have dropped was Nebulash, which I don't know if it's necessarily recommended after Golem. Um, but it was recommended for Golem. But obviously I don't want to fight this guy before fighting Golem. Uh, like, let's be real. Um, I guess that's it. But it's, uh, you know... A whip sword that has particle explosions, which is cool. Explosions are cool. Uh, but this rogue weapon is actually, like, really cool. Um, it sucks that, like, it sucks. <laughs> but yeah. Rogue weapons are weird because you need to wait for stealth strikes uh, for it to work correctly or as good as possible. And we can cosplay as Loki now. Which is nice. Sorry, Red. Loki's cooling. We'll get the Astrum Aris out. And he gives Aris cells, which I'm pretty sure they're crafted, used to craft some things. Um, just the Star Core, I guess. And the Celestial Jewel, which is used to make Astrum Arcanum, which provides immunity to Astral Infection debuff. It's defense. Um... Is that it? Who's life regen while under the effects of damaging debuff? While under the effects of damaging debuff, you'll gain a lot of defense. Um, teleport to a random location while no bosses are alive? Oh, that's cool that it just TPs you anywhere. It's actually nice. I was hoping to get a teleportation potion, um, but I realized that they're like impossible to get. Astral Injection gives mana sickness and hurts you and used it, but you regenerate mana extremely quickly even while casting and moving spells. Oh, that's cool. That'll be great for when I decide to do a mage playthrough before it goes to 1.4. Um, ooh, we got Loki's die. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, better than the shield? Better than the shield. Um, can we put it, honestly, kind of one on my chest. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I've never seen Loki's, I've never seen a die before for a, for a dev. That's cool. Um, Starlight Fuel Cell. This will increase our adrenaline mode damage by another 15, as well as the damage reduction by another 5, which is amazing. I love it. Love to see it. 10 out of 10, the best. And we also got Astrum Aris, uh, a titanic cyborg infected by a starborn disease expelled from the belly of an ancient god. You know, just the usual stuff in Terraria. The destruction of this creature will not prevent the spread of the disease, um, which is good because we like the infection. It's a very good, uh, very good issue to have. Um, I think we can, yeah, yeah, we could use Hallowed Key to just craft. So I'm gonna just leave it there because if we need it, we have it, and we can just get some. We'll have some more <laughs> ectoplasm. So yeah, that's uh, that's Astrum Aris and Astrum Dias on accident. So basically, 
that means all we really have left to do is Plague Blink Plague Bringer Goliath, which is like Super Queen Bee Demon Mode, which will take a little bit of getting used to as well as farming up some materials. There are some enemies in the in the whatever it's called over here. Which, by the way, I'm going to make a little bit of a teleporting altar over here. Just so that it's easier to get into the jungle. Um, because <laughs> laziness is fun. And also laziness when it comes to this is, is definitely more fun. Um, so let me grab... Eh, I don't want to switch. Yeah, 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 I do want to switch for the other side. Or, no, 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 I don't really care for a switch for the other side. We'll get a pressure point. We'll go over to our last the, uh, steampunker. Grab two TPs, as well as one of each. And see coordinates. We'll grab <laughs> one of our coordinate mabobs and make the wireless. So yeah, we're gonna head into the glorious wonders of the, uh, glorious wonders of, I'm losing it, I'm losing it already, which is not good, because, um, I've been playing Binding of Isaac a lot, and I've been getting annoyed at Binding of Isaac, so I'm wanting to play Terraria, but I don't want to play it and just not do anything productive, so I'm trying to do stuff productive, and as you can tell, I'm losing it a little bit, so kind of sucks but also two things first nobody's watching so it doesn't really matter in my opinion uh how good the quality is um i know that's terrible terrible view set to have um but i mean <laughs> if nobody's watching nobody will know first off second off um my quality will just get better and better as I get better at talking, and I think that's better than a lot of other fake quality things that people try to get uh, going in their videos. So I think it's I think it's okay um, to be a little bit more lazy and accept the fact that like I'm gonna be a little awkward, and that's just how it's gonna go. Hopefully, we'll be able to have some nice, uh, some nice fights, some really fun fights before the series is over, and I'm gonna switch over to probably a different mod, honestly, not limit myself to one weapon, hello, um, and instead of limiting myself to one weapon, I'm going to limit myself to basically one mod that changes gameplay. Uh, obviously, I'm going to keep all the quality of life mods. Like, I haven't played through all of 1.4 because I know that I need a trapper bolt for something. Um, because I've actually decided that I don't want to... I need life fruit. Uh, I've actually decided that I don't want to deal with normal inventory stuff. I know that I can play 1.4 uh, alpha with uh, alpha team mod loader with um, with magic storage, but I'd seen that it had some issues uh, before I even like installed it. So I was like, I don't really want to deal with like all these issues. I want to get in there when it's more uh, kind of guaranteed to work. As you can see, we got our little Plague Bringer guy, uh, guy down here, and we gotta fight Plague Bringer enemies so that we can get Plague Cells. And when we get enough Plague Cells, we can craft the uh, Abomination or Abomination. And this bad boy requires 20 Plague Cells, so it'll take a little bit of our time, but without too much of a wait, I'll be able to... I'll be able to fight Plague Bringer, and that'll happen in the next episode, just because this one's taken a little bit of time. I could cut it down a little bit, which I probably will, because we're at almost 30 minutes right now. Um, 
I will cut it down a little bit from the just normal amount by getting rid of some Astrum uh, Deus fight. Just because I wasn't supposed to be fighting him, so it doesn't really mean, mean I need to be fighting him. So, yeah, just going to be a, a bit of a wait around, see what happens. We killed a boss this fight, you know, not too much, not too much stuff happening, but just enough. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. And, uh, yeah, the episodes might take a little bit to come out just because I have to feel like editing it as well. Um, and I need to try to actually edit them rather than just, uh, minorly edit them because <laughs> accidentally letting a few coughs through in one of the episodes kind of gives me, like, scared vibes. Like, oh no, I let a cough through. <laughs> There's a moment where I just cough really loudly. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode.